radiocarbon age modeling. Our goal today is to use radiocarbon sample results to interpret the chronostratigraphy of two cores collected adjacent to Humboldt Bay in 2001. We will correlate buried marsh deposits interpreted to be evidence for co-seismic subsidence based upon our radiocarbon age interpretations. We will learn how to calibrate and interpret radiocarbon age determinations, how to calculate sedimentation rates using radiocarbon age estimates, and how to use sedimentation rates to estimate ages of materials with no direct radiocarbon age estimates. Radiometric age control is based on three primary assumptions. There's a closure time when the material no longer increases in concentration of a given isotope, that the isotope decays at a known rate, and that there is no contamination and remains a closed system following the closure time. The mathematical expression, the age equation, that relates radioactive decay to geologic time is stated in yellow. Where T is the age of the sample, D is the number of atoms of the daughter isotope in the sample, D sub naught is the number of atoms of the daughter isotope in the original composition, N is the number of atoms of the parent isotope in the sample at time T, the present, lambda is the decay constant of the parent isotope. Radiocarbon age control is a method of determining the time that something died. Living organisms absorb many isotopes during their lifetime. Relevant isotopes for this exercise include carbon-12 and carbon-14. Carbon-12 is a stable isotope, but carbon-14 is radioactive and decays to a daughter isotope at a known rate called the half-life. Once an organism dies, it generally ceases to absorb carbon. Carbon-14 is formed in the atmosphere when cosmogenic nuclides bombard nitrogen-14. When these nitrogen-14 isotopes get hit with a neutron, they emit a proton and turn into carbon-14 isotopes. The rate of incoming nuclides varies with the strength of the Earth's magnetosphere and the rate that these nuclides are formed. The rate that carbon-14 decays proceeds with a half-life of 5,730 years also known as the Libby half-life. Modern analytical techniques of estimating the amount of carbon-14 in a sample is made by using accelerator mass spectrometry. AMS indirectly counts the atoms of carbon-14 and carbon-12 in a given sample, determining the carbon-14 to carbon-12 ratio directly. The sample, often in the form of graphite, is made to emit carbon ions, carbon atoms with a single negative charge, which are injected into an accelerator. The ions are accelerated and passed through a stripper, which removes several electrons so that the ions emerge with a positive charge. The carbon positive ions are then passed through a magnet that curves their path. The heavier ions are curved less than the lighter ones, so the different isotopes emerge as a separate stream of ions. A separate detector that records the number of ions detected in the carbon-14 stream, but since the volume of carbon-12 and carbon-13 needed for calibration of the instrument is too great for individual ion detection, counts are determined by measuring the electric current created in a Faraday cup. Faraday cups are located where the isotope labels are placed in the figure below. The figure shows a simplified schematic layout of a mass spec using the counting carbon isotopes for carbon dating. Because the rate of incoming nuclides has varied through time, we cannot simply apply the half-life to the measured quantity of carbon-14 isotopes to determine the time since that object died. Radiocarbon geochronologists have constructed an empirical calibration curve based upon comparisons between tree ring radiocarbon ages and the count of years back based upon these tree rings. The dendrochronologic based calibration curve extends to about 13,000 years before present, which is 1950. Researchers have extended the calibration curve further back using carbon-14 ages 
prepared with high precision thorium urium age determinations back to about 50,000 years. There are a number of radiocarbon calibration software applications that one may use to convert a lab age to a calendar age. These include Calib, OxCal, and Calibrate, among others. These software applications have been developed to also include additional information to help model the age results. Some of the information that we can use includes the stratigraphic depth of the samples, the superposition of the samples, sedimentation rates, and ages from other radiometric techniques and other information. Sediment cores 01HB01 and 01HB02. Marsh deposits, dark gray, or overlain by muds, light gray. Sample locations are numbered, but not every sample location has a radiocarbon result. Step 1. OxCal Calibration. Log on to OxCal and calibrate some lab ages. Enter the results in the table. The samples that we will calibrate are the ones that have lab ages, but no calendar ages. Calibrate ages that have reported lab ages. Take these following steps. Log into OxCal, enter the lab age and uncertainty, enter the name, and click Calibrate. First go to the OxCal website using the following URL, c14.arch.ox.ac.com uk forward slash oxcal.html Next click on the OxCal online link. Create a user account and log in. Save the username and password so that you can get online here again. Enter the following into the web form that should like the screen look like the screenshot on the right. Name the name you give to the sample, like 01HB01 underscore 180. Date, the lab age in radiocarbon years, like 1570. Plus or minus, the uncertainty associated with the lab age, like 40. Curve, choose intcal 13. Other curves are useful for calibrating marine ages or to compare results from analyses conducted using older radiocarbon curves. Click the Calibrate button. This is the result in plot form. If you want to get back to this plot, click View and then click Plot Single. The red curve is the radiocarbon lab age probability density function uh, Gaussian distribution of 1570 years plus or minus 40. The blue curve is the radiocarbon curve plotted as a correlation between the lab age, which is the vertical axis, and the calendar age, which is the horizontal axis. The gray curve is the calibrated age probability density function 402 to 572. Cal AD. Let's make some changes. Click on Format. Enter checks in the following checkboxes 68.2 for one standard deviation, mu, which is the mean, sigma, the uncertainty, and median. Choose Cal BP years for calendar years before present, which is 1950. This way, our data count back in time so we are not confused by the ADBC system of time. Choose round by 10 years. Note the data that are now included on the plot. If you want to save the plot as a graphic, click File, click Save As, and choose the format and the name. 
Next, we will view the table. Click on View. Click on Table. The 68.2 and 95.4% age ranges are listed in the table, along with the mean, sigma, and median. Determine the 95.4% mean age and 95.4% uncertainty for the calendar age. For example, 01HB01 underscore 180, the calendar age and 95.4% uncertainty is 1460 plus or minus 90 calendar years before present. Rinse and repeat for all samples that have lab ages but no calendar ages. Enter calendar ages into the table for all samples that were calibrated. We will now calculate the sedimentation rate for each sample that has a direct radiocarbon age estimate. First use the sample depth as a proxy for the amount of sediment overlying each radiocarbon age along with that radiocarbon age to calculate a sedimentation rate at those depths. Then calculate the mean sedimentation rate by using the sedimentation rate calculated at each radiocarbon age. Finally, fill in the answers in the table. Calculate sedimentation rates in centimeters per year for samples with calendar ages. For sample 5, 180 centimeters divided by 1460 years is 0 0.123 centimeters per year. Rinse and repeat until all unknown sedimentation rates are calculated. Calibrate the mean sedimentation rate for each core using the sedimentation rates calculated within that core. Enter this rate in the table. We could use a statistical age model to perform this task. If people know how to do this, feel free to attempt this. Otherwise, we will simply use the mean sedimentation rate and the sample depths to calculate an age estimate for some of the deposits interpreted to be marsh soils buried during earthquakes. Step 4. Correlation. Finally, we would like to correlate the buried marsh deposits between each core. First, write the radiocarbon ages next to each sample number on the core diagram. Next, draw correlation tie lines between the tops of the buried marsh deposits that you interpret to correlate with each other based upon the radiocarbon ages. Label the tie lines with buried horizon numbers beginning with BH-1 for the uppermost buried marsh deposit. Enter the number of buried marsh deposits in the table. Step 4a. Write down the calendar age of each deposit next to the deposit's number. List the 95.4% error if there is one. Calculated ages don't have an error in this case. Draw correlation tie lines between buried soils, they have radiocarbon evidence that they were formed at the same time. One form of evidence is that the ages have the same median age. This is strong evidence that these buried soils were buried at the same time. Another form of evidence is that the 95.4% uncertainty range overlaps for ages in different cores. It is possible that some soils are in one core, but not the other. Label the tie lines with buried horizon numbers, BH-1. How many buried horizons are found in these two cores? It is possibly more than seven. Typically, ages will get older with depth. Occasionally, there will be an age inversion. This means that the lab or calendar ages are not in stratigraphic order. There may be some reasons for this. One or more of the three primary assumptions for radioactive age control was or were violated. 
The age of the sample did not represent the age of the deposit, possibly due to bioturbation. Maybe a rodent or invertebrate organism moved the material to a different stratigraphic depth. Some additional reason. If the ages in your analysis have an age inversion, try to hypothesize about why this may be. Consider an additional reason not lifted, listed above. Here are the sources of material from which I use to prepare this activity. Some of these references are commonly used for most papers that utilize radiocarbon age analyses.